Hello, this is Jason. Back with another walk and talk with Jason. Got a little, a little bit of a cloudy day. Let's see if I'm pointing in the right direction. I've got some new, some new things. I got a, uh, a new bag, and I got strapped on. I'm gonna test it out today. I got my drone in it, and it's big enough to hold my my laptop, my iPad, my drone with the controller and the extra batteries and my cameras and all the extra batteries with that and tripods and stuff that I got. And it's all pretty compact. And it's pretty comfortable, the strap, so far. We'll see how it feels when I get uh, six miles walking in on it today, how it feels. It's not fully loaded. I just have the drone and the controller in there right now. We'll see how it feels halfway loaded. But when I fully loaded it, it was like 13 pounds. So that's that's with all of those items that I mentioned. That's a little much. A little much. But I had a pretty annoying day. <laughs> I'll tell you about it as we go here. Well, let's talk about some more of the, the positive things. Some of the things that are going well. I, I'm wearing my new uh, Ghost 16 GTX shoes. Booyah! Booyah! Let's get those. Let's get those in a walk. Yeah, looking good, aren't they? So, I, I've had Ghost 14s, and I've had the uh, Goat or the Brooks Beast 23s, which are similar except they're the stability shoe version of this. I like Brooks shoes. I've not really uh, totally gave them the endurance test yet, but just based on how the tread is on the bottom. They look to be pretty durable. And um, I've about got my Hoka 1 1 Bondi 8s about worn out. So, hey, is that a fan? Is that a fan beeping at me? <laughs> Probably just someone that saw those recording. So, they want to get in on the action. And what else? What else have I got? That's the, that's the main things. So now let's jump into the things that are annoying me. So I ordered quite a few, and this is my first mistake. So I got into a, a little bit of a Lululemon kick. You're like Lululemon. I thought Lululemon was like a girl's brand, first of all, <laughs> when I heard it in the past. And, uh, and you know, fast fashion or high fashion. I've, I've never been into fashion, if, if you can't tell, just by looking at me. <laughs> but I happen to be, I was watching YouTube and it might have just been like a, a YouTube video that I was watching and it skips to the next video, skips to the next, and a video came up that that was a guy that like deconstructs clothes and he's in the uh, like the manufacturing area. I don't know, he's a, a manufacturer and 
so he takes clothes apart and then tells you whether they're high quality, you know, points out all the different things that they do that make either make them good or make them bad, you know, and, and whether they would be worth the price that they're asking. So he happened to be deconstructing a pair of Lululemon ABC pants, which the ABC means anti-ball crushing. It's anti-ball crushing technology. <laughs> and when he said that, I thought that was kind of funny. So I'm like, Lululemon's got a sense of humor. <clears throat> and I watched him deconstruct a whole pair of Lululemon pants. And he, he was pointing out like things that they did that just made it like real high quality, the way that the stitching that they used and um, he talked about, I learned more about like manufacturing clothes than I'd ever known before. Cause he talked about like A surfaces and B surfaces and C surfaces, like A surface, I think that's what they're calling. I'll, I'll call them that. But the A surfaces are, are like the things you see, you know, like the stitching on the outside or, you know, right when you're looking at it. And the B surfaces might be on the inside that you can see if you turn them inside out, but it's not normal that you see them and then like sea surfaces or stuff that's like buried inside like when you take a pocket apart and it you would have to take the pocket apart to see the stitches that are inside the pocket type of thing that way you couldn't see it from the outside they're like the hidden surfaces so lululemon like went above and beyond on all the surfaces even stuff that you couldn't see they were doing stitches and making everything look clean and you know putting the extra stitch in I don't know I forget all the stuff that he was talking about but it was the type of stitch the type of materials he was just basically saying that it was all done very well the, the fabrics and the quality of the fabrics was really nice and the manufacturing and and the, the attention to detail so that pretty much he gave Lululemon like this real high rating on their pants so that got me interested in like, well, you know, I've been thinking about just having, a, you know, selling most of my clothes and just having a few pair of clothes. So if I'm only gonna have like one pair of pants, maybe I'll just have a pair of these Lululemon pants. Let me try them out. They're so high quality that maybe that's the kind of pants I need in my life. <laughs> so I went on Lululemon and the pants themselves are like I think they're like $128 maybe and I'm like well let me check them out on eBay so I did find some on eBay and like 40 or 50 bucks so I ordered a pair of those and then while I'm on there I'm like well let me check out some other stuff from Lululemon just took out some Lululemon shirts so I ordered some there's different kinds of shirts. There's like a, a polo type shirt and then like a more of a workout type shirt and then some t-shirts. And so the largest size that I was able to find on eBay was extra, extra large. And I'm like, that should be large enough for me. Like with, uh, that's as big as I buy them from Duluth Trading, extra, extra large and they fit fine so the first shirt comes the polo and it's kind of tight <laughs> to say the least but the thing is it's so short it's cut so short and it's probably just because i'm fat that i need some extra material to go over the gut and then still be able to be long enough to go down long enough to wear when I raise my arms, I don't look like Elon Musk when he was jumping on stage. <laughs> so I, I raise my arms in this polo shirt and the, the bottom of the shirt almost goes up to my nipples. <laughs> Maybe not quite that much, but it at least went up to my belly button to where the bottom of my gut's hanging out. And I don't like that. And I, I, I went through this with the 
the merino wool shirts that I was trying on too. Like the Unbound Merino and Ridge Merino. Uh, and then a bunch of different Merino ones on Amazon, like kind of lesser known brands. All those I sent back. The material was either too thin or the shirt was too short that when I raised my arms, the, the shirt would go up to my belly button. And I don't like that until I found the the minus 33 brand and they have a, a long cut shirts. I needed to start looking at like tall, make sure that I'm buying shirts that are tall. I think that means that they cut them longer. And it's been so long since I've really bought clothes <laughs> that I am rediscovering things that I need to be looking for. Because <laughs> it, I didn't buy Halls in my uh, Duluth Trading, they just make long shirts. And that minus 33 brand, those aren't talls, but they just make long shirts. So, you know, some brands just make, make a tall version, but so it's, I don't know, it's kind of hard to find the right size if you haven't tried the brand before. But what I've discovered is <sighs> Lululemon they like to make short shirts. Lululemon makes short shirts. So that's fine. I returned the first one, returned the polo. And then the second shirt comes that I ordered. And I should have just ordered one shirt from Lululemon in extra, extra large. And once I've discovered that extra, extra large in one of the shirts was not gonna be big enough, then I would have known not to buy more extra extra large shirts from lululemon because they're not going to be to my liking either unless maybe one style of shirt they have a long version that's still to be determined because i got more on the way <laughs> oh i'm an idiot but anyway that's not that's that was a slight annoyance, just that they're short. But the first one, they had a return policy. They even played, paid for the return shipping. Easy peasy, no problem. I'll get my money back in a couple days. Second shirt comes, and the way this guy packed it is he basically took like paper, it's, it's almost like a paper bag that you get a, at a grocery store, and laid the paper out flat and put the shirt in it and then rolled the shirt into the paper, into the paper bag, just rolled it like four inches, four or five inches wide, just rolled up with a shirt in it. So, you know, when I got the package, I kind of thought that he had kind of made an envelope out of the paper, but he had like, the shirt was intertwined into the package. And so he, he rolled it all up lengthwise and then folded it over on both ends and then wrapped the whole thing in tape to where it was completely covered in tape. So there's no point of the package where you could just, you know, tear into the paper with your hands to open it. You had to cut it with something. And so I'm looking for a place to cut it. And my logical thinking was to open it like uh, an envelope. Let me see if I'm pointed straight here. So I, I try to cut the edge, the corner, like an envelope to tear it open in the corner. But he had intertwined the shirt through the whole package that it's, you know, it's, it's hard to demonstrate. <laughs> I'll show you some pictures of how it, I opened it, but the the shirt was you know wrapped around the edge it was throughout the whole package so there's no place that you could cut into this package without cutting into the shirt so of course i cut into the shirt when i was opening his fortified packing tape fortified paper packaging <laughs> 
And so I, I messaged him on eBay and, and he's like, I'm so sick of you people. <laughs> and like, you know, damaging these shirts. And I'm like, so th this isn't the first time this happened. He's had multiple people do this. If you think, you know, this has happened, you know, five or six times, however many times it, it happened for him to be upset at, at you people for opening his package and damaging the shirt, wouldn't you think that, hey, maybe my packaging process is not foolproof. Maybe I should change my packaging process. No, it's everyone's an idiot because they didn't open it in the way that he had imagined they would open it. And he was like, how hard is it? You should have cut along the seam in the back and open it through that way. It's like, well, you didn't deliver a schematic of how to open your packaging contraption without damaging the goods inside. Maybe you should have uh, affixed the, <laughs> the, per, the operation manual of how to dissect your packaging without damaging the products. I'm like, maybe you should, uh, instead of using your unconventional packaging, maybe you should uh, look up on Amazon poly shipping bags or poly mailer bags and put your shirts in that. And they, they're self-closing. You don't have to use packing tape. You can open them with your hands. They protect your product during shipping. That's what I use on all the stuff that I ship. And I've never had anyone damage the product shipping it that way. That's how Amazon ships a lot of their packages. It's just a, basically a plastic bag that you could tear open with your hands. <clears throat> he didn't reply after that. And he's, he's not gonna voluntarily refund me either. I have to wait till October 24th until I can uh, talk to eBay to see if they will be willing to refund me for his packaging practices. Let me see if I can get across here. So that was an annoyance. That was my first annoyance of the day. <clears throat> So that's still to be determined of whether it's or at one mile. I'll take my first drink. Hold on. Let me put you down for a second. And this is another new thing I got. Can you see this? It's my new uh, Osmo selfie stick tripod. Pretty cool, huh? And put you down on the ground. Have a little drinky, and then I can show you my back, my little bag. Pretty nice little messenger style bag, I guess you could call it. It's really not a messenger bag. It's more designed for a camera bag, like an actual full frame camera with lenses. but it also fits a 14 inch MacBook Pro. And this is the Peak Design, what do they call it? Peak Design 10 liter, 10 liter everyday bag, something like that. I'll put a thing on the screen of what it actually is, which I think I've already done in a previous video, but. In case you've not tuned in before and you're new to this walk and talk then welcome welcome allow me to continue expanding on the annoyances that i've experienced <laughs> today thank god it's friday i really needed it to be friday today <clears throat> so the other annoyance 
is at my job, one of the things that I do is I deal with Microsoft licensing a lot. And we have like this partner licensing portal that we can log into when the customers can't get their product keys. And we used to be able to just generate a product key for them and give them their product key. Took two minutes, easy peasy, done, case closed. But about a year and a half ago, Microsoft's partner website stopped working and we were not able to generate keys. And I've opened cases with them and they've worked on it for weeks and they've acknowledged it's not working correctly. And we got two of our best men working on it right now. But it, it still broke a year and a half later. So that in itself is annoying. But I, I opened a case. So anytime the customer needs a product key, we have to open a case with Microsoft and they'll just read us their product key over the phone. So I opened a case and I got a guy that had no idea what he's doing. <laughs> I explained the issue and I told him I need them to read the product key for the customer. Oh, well, uh, I don't have that right now. Like, what do you mean you don't have it? Well, send me a screenshot of the error that you're getting. I'm like, I don't need you to troubleshoot the error. I don't want you to work on fixing your website because that's not going to get fixed. People have been trying to fix it for the past year and a half. I just need you to read me the customer's product key. Oh, well, I'll send you an email. Send me the screenshot. And I'll get back to you. So like two hours later, he sends me an email. I'll reply back. Screenshot of the error. Don't hear anything. So this, that was yesterday. This, this should be something that takes two minutes to do if, the, if their website worked properly. <clears throat> so today, this morning I emailed them. I'm like, so how about the product key? How long does it take to get a product key? Didn't hear back from them. So then I just, I opened a new case, explained the issue over to a new person. And an hour later, that guy calls me back and reads me off the product key. Thank you. That's all I wanted. So <laughs> I was already annoyed because I already had this eBay experience earlier in the morning. So I emailed the, the Microsoft guy back and I'm like, I opened up another case today and the guy was able to get me the product key back within an hour with no, no uh, questions asked. You could close this case now. Thanks for being useless. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I told my mom that she said that she thought that maybe I was a little too harsh which maybe I was but I was I was just annoyed so I might have taken it out on him a little bit with that last line of thanking him for being useless <clears throat> then when I fill out the survey I said that he was of no use rather than calling them useless. <laughs> but I did give a five-star glaring review of the second guy that I contacted that helped me within an hour and told, told them how great that he was. So that bounces out. So that was another annoyance. But that's not the only annoyance. And this, this last one is a minor. Uh, annoyance but it just bugs me <laughs> and so today I went and ate pizza with some of my co-workers and then at the end they give you the and this is just an annoyance in general with tipping and the way that tipping culture in America is getting out of control so now the default, they hand you this little machine, you know, you put your card in and you know, it gives the default tip percentages. And the, the lowest one on it was I think 22%. Hello. Hi. And then like 25%, 28%. So they keep creeping up with, you know, it used to be like, 10, 15, 18%. Now it's getting like over 20 before it'll be like, would you like to double, double down on your order? Pay 
in a tip what your whole meal cost as the default selection. <laughs> so now you have to go and choose other to input if you only want to tip like 18%. <sighs> so like 18% is my default, which I, I still think is high. America is the only place that has that high of a percentage of tipping. Like even in other places where tipping is a thing, like five to 10% is a tip. And that's because they actually pay their workers a wage that they're able to live on. And they don't have to depend on begging from strangers to be able to pay their bills. So I'm annoyed with just how tipping in the United States works in general, but now they just keep raising the base default tip that is presented. And this was a go in, sit down, they come to your table and take your order, normal type of restaurant. So I'm not that annoyed with tipping at those places, but I'd mentioned in a, a video of like the Mighty Fine video that was on eating with Jason that I already deleted and is, if you've not seen it, it's no longer in existence. <laughs> so this, this uh, needs to be repeated to be preserved in posterity throughout history. <laughs> but there you go in and you go up to a counter just like McDonald's and you order and then they too have, you know, default 20% tip. They're, they're like, there'll be little questions that you wanna answer there at the end there. Like, <laughs> like why would you tip 20% when you're walking up to the counter and ordering like at McDonald's? <laughs> it makes no sense. They're not coming to your table. They're not taking your order. They're not bringing you drinks. You have to get up and you go to the fountain machine, just like McDonald's. I'm doing all the work here. Would you like to tip me 20%, take 20% off my order since I'm doing all this extra work? That would be nice. Where's that option? Where, what, where do I click that button? <laughs> so, <clears throat> and I've also seen where they are having tips like at self-checkout places, like at, uh, what do they even call them? They're like, uh, you go in and there's like no attendance there. It's just a bunch of beverages and snacks and you go pick out your snack and you scan it yourself and then you tap to pay with like Google Pay or Apple Pay and then it asks for a tip on the self checkout thing where you went and picked up your own stuff. It's like asking for a tip at a 7-Eleven or at a grocery store <laughs> when you're self checking out. It's like, oh my God, it's, it, it, it's getting nutty. They're just asking for tips everywhere. And a tip isn't even a tip anymore. Like everyone expects it, like it's required. I shouldn't even be calling it that. It's like, where is the, where is the required uh, additional money that <laughs> you're supposed to pay. Like you see uh, videos on on YouTube, just look up like driver angry or it's basically like Instacart. Cause that's another one like Instacart or uh, the grocery delivery services, like even Sam's or Walmart. You could just order for like home delivery. <laughs> And they, they want to default like a high percentage tip, like 20%. So you could have like a $400 grocery order, like say from Randall's, and it'll want you to default tip 20%, which what would that be? $80? You want to tip an eight, $80 to the person that drives it to your house? And they're not even... Like, like the ones at Randall's, they're not even like Instacart, where Instacart, if you order, say from Costco or something, they, they'll go in and actually do the shopping for you. Like they'll go pick out all the items. 
but like at Randall's, when you order home delivery at Randall's, Randall's themselves, the employees that work at Randall's will go get all the items, bag them up and have them ready for the driver that comes and parks. And then the Randall's employees come out and put the bags in the driver's car. <coughs> and then they drive two miles or not, a mile. They drive a mile. I'm a, I walk to Randall's all the time. They'll drive a mile to my house and back into my driveway and take the bags out of their, their car and walk eight feet to my front of my door and set them down in the front of my door. And they want an $80 tip to, that's the first that they've touched the bags. It's when they get to my house and I have to take them out and walk them eight feet, which, you know, if it's a $400 order, that might be eight bags of, of groceries that they have to walk back and forth eight times for $10 each eight foot trip they're expecting. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So I do not tip 20% for a driver to drive groceries to my house. I'll, I'll pay like a flat rate, like what I think, how long that takes them, which it probably takes them when they actually get there, they might have to wait for five minutes for them to put the groceries in the car. It takes them five minutes to drive a mile to my house. And that's giving a lot, mainly because there's construction right now. And then it might take them five minutes to lift eight bags and walk them eight feet to my door. So like 15 minutes of work, what's a, a good rate for that service? I would say like, <clears throat> $20, $20 an hour would be a good wage if you were just the only person paying them to provide that service. That's a good rate, I think. And if you're only 15 minutes, that would be like $5. $5 of work would be 15 minutes of work at $20 an hour, five bucks. And they're asking for like 80. And I don't give them five bucks. I'll give them like 15 bucks. And I think that's fine. But you'll see people on uh, the videos where like those kind of delivery drivers show up and, the, and they are mad because they get like a low, and that's, that's considered a low tip, I guess, to them. <clears throat> because other people just pay the default and pay a 20% tip on a $400 grocery order. And that's just supposed to be a normal thing now. And no, that's ridiculous. <clears throat> and so I've seen videos where they'd be like unpacking their groceries and saying, you didn't give me a big enough tip and they get in an argument and then they're just loading up the groceries and saying, fine, well, you're not getting your groceries. I'm taking them back. <laughs> and they pack everything up and drive off. <sighs> so, I think that about ends the rant of my annoyances, which was the Microsoft incompetent tech support guy, the incompetent eBay packing guy that's mad at multiple people, including me for cutting into garments when he wraps them up like a, a burrito inside a impenetrable packing tape reinforced paper packaging that you can't get into without cutting into. So with no schematic on how I'm supposed to navigate this stupid packaging to open it without damaging it that he expects everyone to know. And then finally, my annoyance at the American tipping culture. And I'm pretty excited to go to Southeast Asia where there's really no tipping culture at all. It's not expected and it's a bonus. Like if you, there's even places and signs in, uh, in Da Nang, Vietnam, where I've seen this guy walking around. And since there's like a lot of Westerners living there, they're like bringing their 
tipping culture over and I guess that causes problems with the locals that they just don't you know if if westerners and americans and stuff come over and start doing it then it makes everyone else look bad that's not doing it and so they've they're putting signs on the doors that says no tipping please so <laughs> so they're trying to prevent people from tipping over there that's my kind of place it's like we already pay people here the salary that they need to do the work that they are doing stop tipping them please <laughs> it's almost like an insult in some places to where they're like what why are you giving me extra money do you think that i'm not paid well for my job <laughs> that's insulting and that's how it should be the employer should be paying them a wage that is adequate for the work that they're doing they shouldn't have to rely on strangers to give them extra money to be able to make ends meet so i look forward to going and being in a place where the price that is set for a product or service is the price you pay there's no guessing on how much extra you, you need to pay afterwards <clears throat> and they won't be upset if you don't give extra money at the end it's just silly <sighs> so these shoes are feeling good where am i at 2.06 miles in shoes feeling fine my bag's feeling good i barely even noticed that it's on me it's just not shifting all around like my other little crossbody bag that i wear it shifts as i'm walking and makes it annoying this this camera has stuck the same spot right on my chest it's pretty solid <clears throat> it's in a location where it's not like digging into me the other one I had to kind of put up on my shoulder and it would kind of dig into my collarbone sometimes be uncomfortable so this bag great purchase I'll have to do a long walk with it load it up a little more with some like batteries in there because I do have like drone batteries that I put in and I have extra action 5 batteries they're actually action 4 batteries that I kept <laughs> but extra batteries nonetheless that could be heavy and then the big one's my MacBook Pro and then my my uh iPad and I have the keyboard on the iPad in that case adds a little extra weight so it's 13 pounds total fully loaded and I wonder if I can get away with that walk through an airport because my other backpack I have a backpack with like an extra front pack that goes with it you could even have it on the front or you could strap it on the top of the backpack so then it looks like it's just one bag so i can actually make that into one big backpack and then have this bag as my personal item so i'd really have three bags but they won't know it'll look like it's only two bags because you can have one check on bag for free and one personal item so my personal item is going to be loaded with like 13 pounds of stuff <laughs> which i think that's fine i don't even know if there's if they even check weight limits for domestic here and international flights from here and if they do it's 
I think it's like 50 pounds or something. It's pretty high. But where it gets tricky is over in Southeast Asia, like domestic flights in Southeast Asia and going from like Bangkok to Kuala Lumpur or Da Nang or something. All the budget airlines, especially like Asia Air, I think they have a weight limit of it might be 17 kilograms, which is what? I don't know, 40 pounds. So I, th I think I could still get under that limit. I, I got a little scale too that weighs the bags. That'll help me. I'll have to check out what. And this is before, I'm not worried about it for my Bangkok trip, but when I actually retire and go over there to travel around Southeast Asia, I'm gonna be, have to look at what the lowest weight is that I'll need to pack to. And it'll be whatever like Asia Airlines requires, which I think is 17 kilograms, if I'm not mistaken. So I have to fit my whole life into a couple bags, which I'm trying to make it three bags. That's really to make it look like two bags. <laughs> if I could take them apart and then have three. Which now that I got this bag, I'm not sure that I even need the little day bag that goes with mine. I might list mine on uh, eBay and if I could sell it for what I bought it for, I might buy the Peak Design 45 liter bag. Maybe. I'm just digging the Peak Design stuff. It's pretty nice. It is peak design, the peak of designing. They just make really good, high quality stuff. <clears throat> Although the one that I have is high quality too. We'll see, see how things go. I'm definitely taking the one that I got now to Bangkok and we'll see how that works out on that trip and that one's 55 liters but i think it's they count the small bag and the big bag together as 55 liters so i think it's a 40 liter bag with the add-on 15 liter day bag and then this bag that i got is just 10 liters but it fits all the stuff that i want and it's the way that this thing's laid out with like, you can have different compartments inside to keep stuff separated. It makes it even better than the 15 liter bag that I have. Cause that one's just, you know, one big space. You'd have to pile stuff on top of stuff. And I really can't do that with like my drone and my, the drone controller. So then I have to put that inside a bag, which takes up or a case and then that takes up like most of the room in the bag. So I have like less than 10 liter space in the 15 liter bag because I have to protect the items that I put in there because it's all just one big open 15 liter space. Or this one's kind of spread out and it has these little dividers I'll show you that you can keep stuff separated so I don't have stuff banging up against my controller or banging up against the drone. You gotta keep them separated. Oh. Yeah, these shoes are feeling good. Feeling good. Got a little bounce in my step. Feel like I got more cushioning than my hokas. But my hokas are I've been wearing for over two months. They're pretty worn down. 
and the insole that's in them I used before in the, my previous pair of shoes that I worn down. So they're, that insole is done, done, spent. It was, uh, it's like a Dr. Scholl's something or other, where these ones are just the factory ones. They feel good. I think these ones, the factory ones kind of wear down quicker though. So I'll wear them for like a hundred miles and then they're pretty toasted. And then maybe I'll buy a new Dr. Scholl's insert and put in there. Whew. And then in other news, I've already mentioned Bangkok. I wasn't even thinking about it. <laughs> so now I mentioned Bangkok. I got to mention Bitcoin. Bitcoin is doing good. It's doing pretty good. Just in the past month, I think it's up 10 or 12% maybe. It's gone from, it dipped just a couple weeks ago it was below 60 and now it got up to like 68 so it's creeping up to its all-time high again which was 72 73 somewhere in there and I don't think it'll be long until it we get some big old green candles where it's going like 20 50 percent in a day Because all of the uh, Bitcoin's gains happen in like just a few days. Like it goes parabolic just within, I don't know, 10 days. 10 days is like 80% of the gains of Bitcoin in a year. <clears throat> so there's a lot of holding and being bored with it not doing anything. And this has been a long stretch of it, not doing anything for the past four months. <laughs> it's pretty much in the same area. And then suddenly it will pop to the moon. And that's just how it works. Those will be exciting days. <clears throat> it's not too late. It's not too late. I, this is not financial advice. I'm not telling you to dump your life savings in Bitcoin. But I definitely put a lot in myself. Uh-oh. Don't stop there. Don't stop there. All right, keep walking. I thought they were gonna sit down at my picnic table. <laughs> uh, two golden retrievers. <sighs> and the boy, boy, boy. Uh, well, I made it. What time? Well, I did a pretty good time. 48 minutes. And I went the long way. That's a pretty good time for the long way route. Must be the new shoes. Must be. All right, well, thank you for listening to my annoyances. <laughs> allowing me to vent my annoyances. Let's see if we can get a little drone action with some of this cloudy cloudiness that's going on. And a little tripod. There we go. 
sun's already behind the trees. I'll show you my bag. So here's another cool thing. So the, it kind of tightens down. Then you grab this little strap, pop that open. That loosens it up. And then you can slide it off. So it's really easy to loosen and tighten down. It's been pretty big. 10 liter, but it's small enough. Controller. Drony. And they're both sitting in their own little compartment. Yeah. And then let me show you the compartments. See how they have these little compartments and these will flip down. So it keeps it from touching stuff on the bottom. You can put stuff on top. Keeps them separated. So pretty nice. I like the bag. The bag was a good purchase. Oh, and that bag's like 169 maybe. And I got it for like half that price on eBay. I love eBay. Except, point updated. except for the uh, people that pack stuff like an idiot and then blame it on me. <laughs> Make me seem like the idiot. When, hands Ugh. wipe my eyes oh, I didn't bring my little towel all right one more clap for good measure all right you take off and shut up the yeah, sun's over there somewhere Pretty cool with the cloudy, cloudy contrast. I don't think we're gonna see any sun though. Max altitude. Max altitude reached. That's all we get. It's still pretty. It's still pretty with the clouds. Get a little bit better view from the sky of the cloudiness. Ooh, almost spilled my tea. Not not as pretty as just a pure sunset. So not much to look at there. So I'll wrap it up. Thanks for listening to my venting, I will call it. It's not quite ranting, almost to a rant. More of a, a vent, I would say. <laughs> uh, but let me know if, if those things would annoy you. Actually, I, that's kind of the stuff that you post on a a i t a on Reddit, if you're familiar. There's a lot of A-I-T-A stuff like that on Reddit. 
and that stands for am I the asshole? <laughs> so let me know, am I the asshole? Or are those things annoyances to you too? So that's all I got. Thanks for coming along with me and I'll talk to you later. Take it easy.